our own society. We've experienced it in America. And so one of the things the devil did was use governments, uh, he used regulations to muffle or shut up the church. I just, again, I'm not talking about your convictions, whether you wear a mask, you don't wear a mask, that's your business. But understand, the devil wanted to <laughs> shut your mouth. Why? He's not all-knowing, but he knows his time is short. He is a spirit being. How does he know his time is short? He's seeing activities in the heavenlies. God has released angels into the atmosphere, and they're kind of making him pretty nervous. And so he uses people to control us. He can use laws, governments, whatever, anyone that will work on his behalf. So us as the church, again, we said this last week, we better hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And no other shall we follow if another voice, I don't care who it is, if another voice tells us something contrary to what the Holy Spirit says, for me and my house will serve the Lord. Now, we, you may have said that, but do you mean it? You know, I just, I've been following this story where a pastor in Canada, he got arrested for having church services. And you say, well, that can't happen in America. Well, it has been happening in America. Uh, pastor Rodney Howard Brown got arrested for having church services. And then I even heard some Christians say, well, that serves him right. You know, how dare him go against what the government says? Well, your government, your constitution gives you freedom of religion and, the, and it says that the government can make no laws to, to lessen that, right? Against it. They can't make a law of any kind. The president can't make a law. The mayor can't make a law. The governor can't make a law to restrict your free exercise of your freedom of religion. So when he did not bow to that, he did it not as rebellion, he did it as, look, there's a higher law. <laughs> i never forget, you know, one of the, uh, the men used to carry the cross around the world. And, you know, he said, well, you know, I go into a lot of countries where it's against the law to proclaim Jesus. He says, but I've got a higher law. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Does that make you nervous? Well, if it is, you, who... Who are you following? The kingdom of God is based on the principles of the, the, of the Word of God. And we talked about this last week. You've got to hear what the Spirit is saying. God is still talking through the Holy Spirit. So we're going to deal with that a little bit more. We talked about the apostles and prophets last week. We talked about how it says that you know, it's built upon the foundation. The kingdom of God's built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. We also read how God now reveals his mysteries to the apostles and prophets. So, it, so what do you get from that? So you find out if you don't have the foundation, you've got a rocky house. I mean, your house is probably going to crumble at some point when things get rough and the shaking starts happening. So Satan, again, it's pretty simple. He didn't really have to have any revelation. I mean, he could just read the Word of God, build upon the foundation of the Apostle Prophet. Well, all I got to do is remove the Apostles and the Prophets, and the church will crumble. It, I mean, it wouldn't take a rocket scientist. It didn't take a bunch of thinking on the devil's part. He just read the Scriptures. Okay, that's all I got to do. So that's what he did. So we talked about last week that the church has been like a three-fingered church. Now, I want to explain that. There's this friend of mine. He was in an accident. He was always, he's worked, he cut trees, he's up and, I mean, he came to our house, and this is no joke, climbed 200 feet, it seemed like, 150 at least, up into this big oak tree, and was cutting limbs out of that thing way up there. I mean, putting ladders. But he had done that all of his life. But he did have an accident one time where a rope actually took off his thumb and his pointing finger. So now, I want to tell you, that's what's happened to a lot of the body of Christ. They've been a three-fingered church. What do you mean? They've, they've got the teacher that gets in your ear. They've got the pastor. And they've got the evangelist. But they don't have the prophet or the apostle. And guess what? If you think about the apostle, he can touch all the others. That means the, a true apostle can operate any one of the others for a season. 
and the prophet is the proclaimer. In the Bible, the prophet did these things. Release people into ministry. That's right. He, he was the one that anointed kings. Jesus told John, the prophet, the prophet John, he said, you must do this when it comes to water baptizing me. Jesus didn't need to repent. But John, being a prophet, had to release him into ministry. Now, there's a whole teaching on that. I could spend two or three sessions on that. But understand the mess that has been created when you remove. Now, what I started to say is, now you take away the thumb, and it's hard to grab onto something. Especially you take away the thumb and the finger. If you could tie them down, it's very difficult to grab onto something. Now, some of you are already catching what I'm saying. Without, a, without that apostle, you just can't quite grab things spiritually. And without the prophet, you don't have the direction because the prophet also did another thing. The prophets are to take us out of Egypt. It says, by the hands of a prophet were they led out of Egypt. A true prophet always preaches holiness, not legalism. They preach, come out of Egypt, be ye separate. And then you'll receive, right, the blessings of a prophet, which is prosperity, uh, multiplication. We see them, people who couldn't have children, have children, and on and on. So understand we've had a three-figure in church. It's time to get the full hand. Just like these two can't do it all either. You can't just have the apostle and prophet. If you had them, then you're in trouble still. So now the church is waking up. All denominations. God is going to use people from all denominations. Now some people, God is not going to use them because they have shut up the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to see some tough sides. It's not God doing it. God does not come to kill, steal, and destroy. But Satan is a legalist. And Satan is going about seeking whom he may devour. Now what's you're going to begin to see happen, now this is prophecy. You're going to be, you're going to be seeing some people removed from their positions in even leadership in churches because they've shut up the kingdom of God from people. And God is cutting the work short. It's already began. I could tell you stuff I'm not going to share. It's already began. So it, listen, one of the things I tell people to do today is make sure you're right with God. I don't care who you are, where you are, or what church you go to. Make sure you're right with God. This is not a time to play around. This is not a time to play church. So this is serious business. So with that, I want to read something here. Now, in Hebrews 1.14 it says, I'm just going to turn there. Hebrews 1.14, let's turn there real quick. Hebrews 1, verse 14. All right, it says, now, actually, I'm going to back up just a little bit. I'm going to back all the way to verse 4. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4. And this is speaking of Jesus being made so much better than the angels as he by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be unto me a son. Again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And the angels, and of the angels, he saith, Who maketh his spirit, his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire? That's one of the reasons we call this fire desire. We all should be in some form, of, every one of us are in the ministry, if you're a born again Christian, of some type. God has a ministry for you. Now, it may not be a pulpit ministry, but every one of us was sent here on a mission. Now, but unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A sepulcher of righteousness is the sepulcher of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of thine hands, and they shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as a death of garment, and as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and, the, and thy years shall not fail. 
But to which of the angels saith he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Angels are ministering spirits that work on our behalf. And I want to challenge you because last week we were talking about sounds. We have to understand angels are spirit beings. They're not like flesh and blood like we are. And as we said, the kingdom of heaven operates under sounds. Again, we don't have to go long. We don't have to study long to understand God works with sounds. Uh, he said even another time in the scripture, he said, if, if these people, these kids, these people don't praise me, the very rocks will cry out. Now that's dumbfounding to us. But those rocks were stacked right there by the children of Israel. They said they were right beside where they crossed the river. So these rocks had heard the sounds and they recorded them. It's been proven by scientists that sound never really ends. You just get where you can't hear it with your natural ear. That's why God's word's eternal. Once he said it, it's still in the atmosphere. Now guess what? Your words are eternal. You're created in the image and likeness of God. So I would suppose we had better watch out what we say. Most of us have heard people say, well, you know, the flu is going around. I'll probably catch it. Well, you just spoke it. You just prophesied that. You, death and life is in the power of your tongue. We need to understand these things. And the reason people say those things is because they don't understand the kingdom. Now, when you get to understand the kingdom and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then we understand that what sounds that I can run the devil out with. Like godly music. He hates it because it glorifies Jesus. It glorifies God the Father. You want to get him nervous. What, what's another sound he hates at this television station? Because sounds are going into right through his bedroom, through the atmosphere, into the, this kingdom of darkness. Spiritual wickedness. You say, well, how can they hear it? Because they're on a different frequency. They may not hear my voice, but they hear it through the atmosphere. So understand, we pray for understanding. So like I said, you better pray for godly TV stations and godly radio stations and, and godly programs that's proclaiming and speaking the things of the kingdom. The devil would love to annihilate. What do you think? Look what he's done. He's tried to shut up our own president's mouth. President Trump tried to shut his mouth. You know, and if they hear you say anything, they'll take you off Facebook. They'll take you off. Why? It's not just the people. It's the devil. The devil is scared to death of what you got to say about the kingdom. This is the time to rise up and speak the things of the oracles of God. When we see society doing what it's doing, all the devil's doing is telling on himself he knows his time's short. He's worried, worried, worried. Now be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. You can't say that. And they'll start putting little things up there. You can't say that. We've already checked that. Really, fact checkers. Uh, who checked your facts? They just say that. They don't check no facts. It's the devil's trickery to block things he doesn't want released in the atmosphere. Now, I believe some of you is catching this. So this is not the time to cow down. This is not the time to, well, I guess, if whatever the, this must be God's will. No, God's will, he already spoke it, that all the earth would be filled with the glory of God. Pretty simple. Uh, he didn't change his mind. I don't, I don't think Pastor Dan believes God changed his mind. He's sitting here in the studio with me. God didn't change his mind. He said all the earth, that's his desire, that's his heart's desire that every person watching this program and beyond would be filled with the glory of God. Well, you can't be filled with the glory of God if you're filled with a bunch of garbage sounds. And what the devil is saying, some of you watch too much news, I'll tell you right now. You watch a bunch of garbage, you watch a bunch of people proclaiming stuff against the kingdom, proclaiming stuff against God's people until some of you actually believe it. You say, well, that's kind of rough. No, it's called tough love. I'm trying to save your life. I'm trying to save your children's life. I'm trying to save your church. 
This is the time to hear what the kingdom of God is saying. Amen? We don't need, not with your mouth muzzled, we need to proclaim clearly and plainly what God is saying in the earth. So anytime you see people trying to shut you up and keep you away, now again, I'm not coming against your personal convictions on these things. What I'm trying to tell you is signs of the times. Well, I can't lay hands on nobody because you know you got to stay six feet away. I'm just saying. So I, I can't follow God's word. It says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I actually, uh, when we had the church that I resigned from last year, there was actually a traveling minister who came. And he was worried to death because their church hadn't been laying hands on nobody. And I said, look, well, you can do whatever the Holy Ghost tells you to do here. Really? Yeah. Because he wasn't used to that. Even though he was spirit-filled, he came from a place, oh, hands off. Well, see, here we go again. And there was actually people would judge people who would dare do that. Dare touch someone. Dear God, don't touch anyone. Can you imagine Jesus? The Pharisees, look at Jesus. He touches the leper. The leper. Dear Jesus, look, look what happens there. The lady at the issue of blood touches the hem of his garment. It's against the law. It was against the law. They would have, on and on and on. These are signs of the times. You say, oh, Rodney, are you just telling me we shouldn't pay attention to anything? No, what I'm telling you to do is pay attention to what the Holy Spirit has to say about it. I'm not telling you what to do about it. I'm telling you, listen what the Spirit says about it. Well, it's pretty simple. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Okay. <laughs> Didn't bother Jesus. The person had leprosy. When the Spirit inspired him to do it. Okay. We have a history of some of the powerful men and women of God used to. They would go in the middle of plagues. And, and on one, they actually put the plague on the, the, the man of God's arm. And they looked under a microscope and that plague died when it touched his skin. We cannot let fear rule us. We're not being foolish. I don't preach to be foolish either. You know, I'm not going to tempt the Lord thy God. But we got to be careful what voices we listen to. All right? And understand the times we live in. I want to get back to something. The other night, uh, I'd said this last week, but now it's been a couple of weeks ago. But on the 4th of July, there was a powerful meeting. It happened in Nashville, Tennessee. And um, you can look online, go to YouTube. They don't block it. You know, they're trying to block stuff so fast. Isn't that something? We are in America, I, I believe. We are still in America, supposed to have freedom of speech. Well, they're trying to block these things. But if you go on YouTube, you can view this. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's powerful. Man of God, Mario Morello, Kent Christmas, uh, on and on. Just look it up, July 4th. The, but during that, Robin Bullock, a powerful man. Now, he's going to look strange to you if you've got any religion to you, Okay. Because, you know, some prophets, we can be strange. I'm more of the clean cut one, okay, according to their saying. But what I'm saying is, don't go on the natural. <laughs> you know, you would have freaked out with John the Baptist, okay? You would have freaked out with John the Baptist, wearing camels for fur, eating locusts. You, you wouldn't have had nothing to do with him, probably. Why is it? Because the true prophet, God uses them to proclaim things. And sometimes they speak without words. They make, yes, they can even, we talked about sounds. Okay, so now understand, God has you created in His image, and you produce, you could, only you can produce your sound. Only you can produce a unique sound that comes from God. A certain frequency. Uh, Pastor Dan here, he understands frequencies. And this television has a certain frequency and they assign it a certain frequency and, and that has to go over the, throughout the tower. And they could get in trouble if some reason they messed around that frequency. Now what's happened in the kingdom of God, people have got off frequency. They need, they need a spiritual engineer. Okay, they needed someone to come in, uh, a godly person to help them get back in frequency with, with the Holy Spirit. And that's what's happened to the body of Christ. We got out of frequency. You know why? Because that's one thing that God uses the prophet for. <laughs> direction. 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 
direction. We talk about direction with frequencies. We send out signals. So understand, this is powerful. You have a frequency in the kingdom that the devil does not have, cannot stand, and wants to shut you up. Now, how, So how can he shut you up? Well, if he can do it through the media, if he can do it through Facebook, if he can do it through the government. But understand, at such a time as we live in, it's time to have full power on your frequency that you're in. Now, I'm going to speak something right now that's not come from my head. I'm believing before we check out, before this thing's over with, I'm going to prophesy. Channel 36, we need more power. We need more frequency. Now, listen, there's some of you watching. If you want to do something for God, if you've sat around and you think, well, and listen, there's nothing wrong with saving up retirement. There's nothing wrong with that. We need to be wise in those things. But there's some of you, and I know it's not a lot, but there's some of you got money. You don't even want to do with it. Listen, sow it into the kingdom. Let's get the frequency higher. Let's get the power higher because the, we're driving the devil boncos. There's people that can't receive this signal because there's not enough power going out. It's not the station's fault. The, F, you know, the federal uh, communications, they regulate them. But you know, they can apply for more power and all those things, but they have to have the equipment. So I'm, I'm challenging you, don't be guilty if God speaks to you to sow a large seed into this station. And, and you think God won't notice it because people like me and other great men and women of God who proclaim things over this airwaves, if not one person, listen, I'm going to say something to you, if not one of you watched this or ever responded, we're still going right through the devil's backyard, through his neighborhood, we're with the sound of heaven. So God had to deal with me on that. I was always worried about, well, I wonder if I'm doing any good. Well, I know I'm doing good because I'm going through his bedroom, <laughs> the devil's bedroom. He's, he's a principal of the air. So the devil is too bad. We're not going to shut up. We're not going to back down. And we're going to continue to give you headaches. Praise God. All right. So thank God for you tuning in. I believe it's divine appointment. And before we get finished these next few weeks, I know God's going to move prophetically and some of you are going to receive direct words. Not by Yes, he'll use my mouth, but he'll be the one talking because he has things to say. He knows your name. He knows where you live. And some of you need encouragement. Say, so don't forget, check out the book, The Poem. You can go to Amazon.com, search Rodney Cruz, then The Poem. And got, I've, been, I've been getting great ratings on there. Um, most people who read it really enjoy it, so I encourage you to do that. And also encourage you to take the time in this busy world to write us or write this station. Let them know they're making a difference, okay? Don't just be a taker. We've talked about this. We've got in the world of take, 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 take. We've just inherited this idea of take, take, take. It's time to give. All right. We love you, and we're praying for you, and we're excited for the future, not... We're not in dismay about the future. We know God is the victor. We'll see you next week on Fire Desire. God bless.